Hi, my name is Bob Kramer. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Kramer's Garage. I've been working on mechanical things for 50 years now, and I've worked on everything from bicycles to industrial equipment. I'm currently employed as a professional bicycle mechanic at the Greenville Cycling and Multisport here in Greenville, South Carolina. And that's where you could go if you want to avail yourself of my services. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and would like to see videos on how the pros do things, that's what I'm here to show you. So we're going to start by showing you the repair stand. Every do-it-yourselfer needs to have a good repair stand to hold the bicycle. Obviously, it's difficult to work on a bicycle if nothing is holding it and it's just flopping around. I've seen people try to hang the bicycle from ropes in their garage or their basement and try to work on it while it's swinging back and forth. I've seen people try to have their wife hold their bicycle while they're working on it. None of those systems work very well and will produce a very good result. My favorite repair stand is made by a company called Feedback Sports and this stand is the ultimate pro. The reason I like this is it has a quick release clamp to quickly release the bicycle from the um, work stand clamp. It also has a very broad tripod base which uh, keeps the bike very stable when you're working on it and it's collapsible and fits into a travel case which I have taken many times to various cycling camps and events. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick how to take the bike out and put it back in. So you just give the clamp a quick twist and then push the button and the bike comes out. When you put it back in you simply squeeze the clamp and notice that I'm clamping the seat tube not the bicycle frame. You always want to hold a bicycle by the seat tube if at all possible rather than the frame especially if you're working on a carbon fiber bicycle. Carbon fiber frames can easily be cracked by too much clamping pressure. Again, we're going to take the bike out of the stand so that we can move on to something else for a moment. So you've gotten your repair stand from Feedback Sports and they make a nice little accessory called a tool tray that you can buy to go with your stand. It quickly attaches to the stand. It can be turned to move it out of the way. When your bicycle is in the stand, the tool tray will be turned toward the back. When you don't have a bicycle in the stand, you can put the tool tray in any position you like. Now, what are you going to put in the tool tray? Well, the first thing you need is a set of Allen wrenches. Nobody can work on a bicycle, a modern bicycle, without Allen wrenches. A good complete set goes from 1.5 millimeters through 10 millimeters. The next thing you're going to need is a Y wrench, a 4, 5, and 6 millimeter Y wrench. It's very handy, speeds up the process of tightening, loosening, taking things apart. There's another Y wrench that has a 1.5, 2, 0.5, and 3 millimeter uh, Allen wrench on it. Also very handy. You need a flat screwdriver, approximately 3 16 inch tip to operate derailleur adjustment screws. You also need a Phillips head screwdriver. If you um, get the JIS model, which stands for Japanese Industrial Standard, it will fit perfectly in all the Shimano um, derailleur components and screws. And then you will occasionally need a smaller screwdriver as well. You may also find the need for a Y socket wrench. This has an 8, 9, and 10 millimeter socket and it's very handy for certain things, especially brake adjustments on older bikes. If you're doing chain maintenance, you will absolutely need a chain gauge. The chain gauge tells you when the chain is actually worn out and needs to be replaced. Every time you clean and lube your chain, you should drop a chain gauge on it first. Um, you don't want to waste your time and materials cleaning and lubing a chain that should be replaced, so check it with the chain gauge first. A properly maintained chain will last between one and two thousand, or between two and three thousand miles. This is a chain breaker. This is the tool that you will use when you put a new chain on your bike and you need to adjust the chain to the correct length, which we will show you in a future video. 
You will also need scissors. When you wrap your handlebars, you will need to be able to cut the handlebar tape and you'll need a pair of heavy duty scissors for that job. Then some other tools that you may not need right off the bat but nice to have. This is called a P-wrench and it's basically another version of an Allen wrench but enables you to get more leverage on things that are tight. Um, P-wrenches are very handy for replacing certain types of pedals on the bike. Incidentally, you will probably also need a pedal wrench. Um, pedal wrenches are basically just a 15 millimeter wrench that is thinner than normal. Needle nose pliers come in very handy for numerous tasks around the shop. So that's your, your basic tools that you're going to need just to get started. That will get you off to a good start. Oh, and one additional thing, every, every home shop needs to have a floor pump. Actually, every cyclist needs to have a floor pump because your tires constantly lose air pressure and they need to be topped off every couple of days or so. This concludes my first video on your introduction to bicycle maintenance. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep seeing more videos on how to do various bicycle maintenance projects. The next video that we're going to make will be on how to repair your flat tire.